G-Man Boxing. Do you know what I mean? Every single live he donates. I see him on other lives donating, donating, donating. He's got the bag on it. Alright people, Gennady Triple G Golovkin defeats Riyadh Morata, ninth round knockout. He is now the unified WBA IBF middleweight champion. It was a very interesting fight to watch, I have to say. I initially, looking at the first round, watched it live, done the watch along. Triple G to me instantly looked slow, looked slower of foot than we're used to seeing him. And actually looked to be blown quite badly after the first couple of rounds. Now, the first round was kind of nip and tuck. It was I, I gave it to Triple G, even though Murata was the, the busier fighter. Triple G was landing his jab quite well. It was effective with the jab. And I thought Triple G was going to look to kind of play it safe, keep it at range, and just try and keep Murata thinking. Almost Triple G wanted to be the hunted as opposed to the hunter. That's what I thought. Now, Murata in the second round... Came on much stronger, really was able to outwork Triple G, was landing body shots on Triple G, and he was noticeably wincing. You could see it in the replays. When they were showing the close replays, Murata would get inside on Triple G, he'd get by the jab, and he'd be able to land his body shots on the inside. And there's Triple G just the teeth kind of grinning, grimacing, as he was feeling them shots. And it was much the same in the third round. So I actually kind of thought to myself, this is interesting, Murata is actually outworking Triple G. Triple G is trying to keep it at range, and he is trying to, you know, Triple G is a very much an offensive type of fighter. So yes, he will keep it at range. But he does also want to get inside, get up close, land some shots, land some loop and hooks and land some uppercuts. And he was having success very early on with a left hook that was kind of a bit looping, was going around the guard of Murata. Now Murata has never shown an amazing defense, it has to be said. In all of his fights, his defense has always been something that you'd looked at and you thought, it's not really there. You know, his defense is not is not his strongest suit. Now, I would have thought against someone like Triple G, albeit an older one, he would have prioritized that. Well, he didn't. And it was so bad that the hook that Triple G was throwing, the lead hook that he was throwing that was getting right round the guard, he was never able to adjust to it. He was never able to roll with it. He never moved his head once in this fight. So his defense was appalling. And it was really after the third round, I started thinking, is Murata going to actually take a foothold on this fight? Yes, he's getting hit by Triple G. You don't want to do that. But Triple G was blowing a bit. And he just didn't look right. He looked slow on foot. He just didn't look like the Triple G we used to seeing. It looked like he was missing something. Possibly, it could have been that he needed a couple of rounds to just kind of feel out the fight, see what way it was going. Because after the fourth round, it was all Triple G. It was literally all Triple G after that point. Triple G started finding range. He started kind of getting a better understanding, I believe, of where the shots from Murata was were coming from and where they were being placed. So he was able to kind of tuck up with the body, was able to know he's coming up to the body, block the body, take a step back when he's trying to, when he's trying to outwork me to the head. I've got the longer reach, so I'm able to keep him at bay with a jab. He's not moving his head whenever I throw the jab, and he's not moving his head when I throw the left hook. So I'm going to keep throwing them shots at him. And that's basically what he was doing. He was just able to kind of read what Murata was doing. He was able to figure out, you're going to do this. Well, I know what you're going to do, so I'm going to take a step back, or I'm going to just put my guard down here and put it there. Yeah, some shots came through on Triple G. He's never had the, he's never had, like, he's never been Floyd Mayweather in there in terms of defense. But he was able to make Murata miss, and then he started finding range. He was able to back Murata up against the ropes. He was able to cut the ring off very effectively against Murata. And he was able to, once he got Murata up against the ropes, and that's when he was having a success. When he was up close with Murata, the uppercuts were finding a home on Murata, excuse me, on Murata, because he was just really comfy with that shot. Murata had no answer to it. Again, the hooks, at, so at one stage it became, it was just like, can he not miss with that left hook? He's leading with that left hook. Murata can't see it coming. He's absolutely making no effort to get out of the way of it. And just, it was much more of the same. So after the fourth round, it became all Triple G. And it actually became a bit of a beating at that point. Murata having such a strong start to the fight, he really went and faded a bit then because he was taking shots from Triple G. He wasn't able to retaliate. He wasn't able to, you know, outwork Triple G. It really became the Triple G show at that point. A slower Triple G, albeit, but it was still the Triple G that we know of, if you know what I mean. He wasn't as sharp as he was against Sarah Meta, but he was nevertheless, he was still able to really get pressure in on Murata. He was able to kind of control it from close range and from long range with the jab. 
and he was able to just put a beating on Morata at that point. After about seven rounds, I was thinking Morata is really in a... It's a case of when, not if. You know, sort of way that when he gets stopped. Tremendous heart, tremendous grit. Took a lot of Triple G shots. His face was a bit bashed up. His nose was probably... Ble- was Definitely was bleeding. He might have had a broken jaw as well. But he kept on plugging away. He kept on coming. It was the ninth round where that really... The writing was on the wall. I think he took a right hand at the very start of that ninth round. And he kind of was... He, he kind of backed up to the ropes. Triple G opened up a combination on him. And it looked like he was about to go down. He didn't. He actually... I thought he weathered the storm. Because he actually came back on Triple G and started landing his own shots. And I kind of thought... Has he weathered the storm sufficiently enough that Triple G... Because he is, he's 40 years old, people. Has he actually punched himself out? Has he actually thrown too much at Morata? And now he's looking to take a few, you know, a round or two off. Well, it wasn't like that because Morata did have some success. Triple G was able to walk him onto a perfectly timed left hook. Morata went down and the corner threw in the towel. They'd seen enough. Their guy was behind. He was taking a beat and he wasn't able to adjust to anything. He was just, he was, even a 40-year-old Triple G, Triple G was better. He was better. Tell went in. I think it was quite right. And Triple G is the winner. So, based off of that performance, if Canelo beats Bival next fight, they're they're looking to do Triple G versus Canelo 3. I'll be picking Canelo to win that fight based off that performance. It wasn't Triple G. It wasn't vintage Triple G. Obviously, it was vintage in terms of finishing. Triple G is lethal as a finisher. One of the best finishers you'll see in the sport of boxing. Maybe even maybe even the best. Now that Deontay Wilder, we don't know what the crack is with him. But Triple G, give him a sniff. Give him an inch, he'll take a mile. He knows when he has a guy hurt, that's it. I've got you. And that is Triple G in the nutshell. That's it. That's what he did with Murata. That's not going to leave him. But in terms of the speed, in terms of his reflexes, I think that that's diminished. And I think Canelo... Can, can, it's always I think Triple G will always raise his game for Canelo, but I can't see other than a Canelo win and possibly, possibly even a stoppage. Possibly even a stoppage. But we will cross that bridge. We get to it as I've said. Canelo has to get over the hurdle. And it's a big hurdle of Dimitri Bivol. Make no doubt. Anyone saying easy win for Canelo, get out of here. It's not. Make no doubt that's gonna be a tough fight. But if he gets by Bivol, Triple G, Canelo, September the zone pay-per-view more than likely I can't see it going any way to Canelo winning but Triple G takes his titles unified champion at 160 pounds at the age of 40 my hat goes off to him I tip my hat to Murata as well tremendous fighter tremendous heart tremendous grit tremendous will to win I think the inactivity really didn't help him the two and a bit years um, but he was in there with an absolute legend who once he figured him out he knew what he was dealing he knew what to do at that point so that's my thoughts on that. Let me know yours in the comment section. Hope you enjoyed the video, lads. And last, if you could, smash the like button. We hit 7K today. Yay. Delighted. Keep it going. We want to get to 10K by the end of the year. So we're less than 3K off. People, thanks for everything you do. I appreciate all the support. Share the video if you want. Do whatever you got to do. Smash the like button. I'll talk to you. Peace.